this video we're going to uh, address a query that comes into our technical department a lot. Um, do we need to uh, coat manic air creep blocks or tank them in uh, bitumen to keep them dry and protect them um, in the construction? Um, before either tank them either before they're built or after they're built um, when they're used below DPC. Firstly, it's important to note that Manic Aircrew blocks have third party certification for uh, use below DPC. All the re relevant freeze thaw tests have been carried out, and there's no issue with the structural performance or durability when using the blocks in this application. So, there is no issue whatsoever using them below DPC, and if you've done so, um, there's nothing to be concerned about. Now, uh, what, what we do note, however, the, that, that to get the best thermal performance from the blocks, um, you get that best thermal performance when the blocks are kept dry. So when they're used either above DPC or when they're protected below DPC, that's when you get the best uh, or optimal thermal performance from them. Um, that doesn't, however, require coating in bitumen or tanking in most instances. And we're look, going to look at two common um, examples of floor to wall junctions to show how um, the blocks can easily be kept dry without the need uh, for tanking them. So uh, this uh, diagram here shows typical insulation below slab situation. So we've got a hardcore blinding. Uh, we've got a radon barrier uh, underneath the insulation, uh, torn up over the top of the block, back down again, out through the cavity, and um, torn outside. Um, above the insulation, then we have a 150 millimeter concrete slab. Um, level with the top of the slab, we have our DPC, which is torn down and uh, lapped down and sealed along there to the radon barrier, which is a uh, good practice. You can see there that the Manic Aircrete block has been introduced there in line with the floor insulation to provide that continuity um, of uh, insulation between the floor insulation and the wall insulation. Um, any water coming uh, in through the outer leaf block walk can easily drain down there. The cavity is drained out to a, a drainage channel with a perforated drain on the outside. Um, so in that situation there, the only um, way that the Manic Aircrete block can be uh, subject to moisture or dampness is raising damp from below. So if that's a concern and you want to get the optimal performance out of the block, then you can simply introduce a second DPC underneath the Manic Aircrete block as shown. And then that block is fully protected from moisture and you get the optimal thermal performance out of it. So a uh, very, very simple detail, um, just the use of an additional DPC and your Manic Aircrete block is completely dry. Very similar detail here. Uh, but in this case, we have insulation above the slab, so we have our concrete subfloor, we have our insulation, and we have our screen on top of the insulation. Again, the radon barrier is sitting there on top of um, the hard core and the, the blinding, and uh, it's torn up. And in this case, it goes out underneath the Manic Aircrete block and is torn out at the bottom of the cavity outside. Um, the damp proof uh, course, which is uh, at the top of the screed level, again is torn down, down the inside of the Monarch Aircrete block and is uh, sealed to the uh, radon barrier there. The cavity is fully drained. And in this, this situation, again, the Monarch Aircrete block is kept completely dry and uh, there is no requirement even for introducing any other DPCs. Um, so again, in that situation, we're getting the optimal thermal performance from the Manic Aircrete block with no requirement for uh, tanking in bitumen or paint with bitumen or any of that um, uh, stuff that people be inquiring about. Um, just looking at um, the thermal performance of unprotected uh, Manic Aircrete blocks uh, compared to protected aircrete blocks and compare, comparing those then to um, 
The other um, main thermal block on the market which is a lightweight aggregate block. So if we look at the dry uh, thermal uh, performance of the blocks, so the Manuk 7, which is a 7.5 Newton block, which is typically used in Ireland, um, the dry thermal conductivity of that block is 0.19 watts per meter Kelvin. The Manuk Super, which is a, which is a higher insulating product, um, but it's 2.9 Newton in strength, that is a thermal conductivity of 0.12 watts per meter Kelvin. And compare those two to um, the alternative thermal block in the market, which is uh, the later aggregate block, the thermal conductivity of this product in its dry state is 0.33 watts per meter Kelvin. So there is a huge difference in the thermal performance of those blocks when they're dry, and as such, there will be a big difference in the thermal performance and the heat loss through the junctions in which they're used. Um, in our agreement certification, there's um, figures given for the use of the blocks both uh, below DPC and above ground level and below DPC but below ground level. So um, the figures then for a Manic 7 block where it's used below DPC but above ground level, our uh, block in that instance goes from 0.19 watts per meter Kelvin dry to 0.21 watts per meter Kelvin when it's used below DPC but above ground level. So there's not a significant difference in uh, the thermal conductivity and a lot of people in the past may have used them above below DPC but above ground level. So um, they are still getting almost the optimal performance from the block. Again the Manic Super there, it increases from 0.12 to 0.13 when it's used below DPC but above ground level. Um, again, if they're used below ground level, uh, you can see there the figures for the Manuk uh, 7 and Super are 0.3 and 0.19 watts per meter Kelvin respectively. Um, so there is a bigger increase there, but again, both those, those figures for using the Manuk blocks below ground level are still um, better actually than the alternative product, the later aggregate block. Um, in its dry state and incidentally there's no figures declared for lightweight aggregate blocks used um, in either of the other two applications that I've mentioned there so all we have in those is the dry um, thermal conductivity of 0.33 we don't have any figures for, for, for use below DPC or below ground level for those products um, and what we've done as well uh, in our own uh, laboratory we soaked Manok aircrete blocks for 48 hours and um, completely saturated them, took them out of the uh, water and uh, tested the conductivity um, straight away. So they were completely saturated. And as you can see there, they give um, the results were uh, 0.33 for the Manok 7 and 0.29 for the Manok Super. And again, if, if, if we look there and compare a most common block on air in the Manok 7, uh, with in a saturated state the conductivity of it is identical to the alternative product later aggregate blocks uh, in the dry state so as we can see there even if the block is immersed in water it's still performing the same as a later aggregate thermal block so again that's that's um, that's positive um, the other uh, concern I suppose with using blocks below DPC is uh, durability. We need to make sure that blocks, the blocks used below DPC will uh, are durable enough for, for, for use in that, that application and we have covered that in another video, a um, short video online in more detail but just, just to summarise it here, um, the location where uh, blocks are subject to um, high saturation uh, with a high risk of freezing is where um, the blocks need to be most durable and that's the, where, where um, NSAA document uh, SR325 states that location where blocks need to be most durable is uh, on the outer leaf there 150 millimeters above and below finished ground level. So as you can see in the detail 
that we've shown earlier where the monarch um, block is located typically there at the bottom of the inner leaf it's subject to low saturation with limited risk of, of freezing so there's no issues there from a durability point of view at all the blocks are, are uh, freeze thaw resistant as well so again uh, no, no issue if we look at um, a typical detail for a late red aggregate block to give the same thermal performance as this detail here using the manic air creep block so um, Rather than using one manic air creep block, here we're looking at using four late with aggregate blocks uh, to achieve the, achieve the same thermal performance. But incidentally, if you note that that particular block there on the outer leaf, at the bottom of the outer leaf at ground level, is located in that zone uh, where um, the block is subject to high risk of saturation with freezing. And, um, in SR325, uh, table 14A states that blocks used in that location should be 13 Newton in strength. They have to be 15, have a density of 1500 kgs per cubic meter, and they have to be manufactured using dense aggregates. Unfortunately, there's no thermal block on the market um, with those three attributes. So. Um, really and truly that block, if we're using a later aggregate block in that location there, it should be fully protected and, ta and uh, tanked. Uh, or if we're not prepared to do that, then the detail as shown using the Manuk Air Creek block in the protected location is a much better option. So uh, again, in summary there, uh, Manuk Air Creek blocks can be easily kept dry to achieve the optimal thermal performance uh, without the need to coat or tank in a bitumous type product. Uh, Manuk Air Creek blocks below DPC subject to rising damp are little affected uh, in, in terms of thermal performance. There's very little difference uh, if, if they're used below DPC but are still above ground level. Um, Manic aircraft blocks fully immersed in uh, water for 48 hours um, have a similar thermal performance to that uh, of, of a later aggregate block uh, which is completely dry so um, just a good comparison to say that when the blocks is fully saturated and still perform the same as um, the other alternative product on the market. Uh, lightweight aggregate blocks have no declared uh, performance below DPC. So again, the manic aircraft blocks, we, we, we have declared performances in all those situations below DPC, but for the many lightweight aggregate blocks in the market, we only have dried performance. So we don't know how they're performing below DPC from a thermal point of view. Um, again, uh, as discussed, there's no durability issues whatsoever when using um, Manic air creep blocks below TPC and uh, durability can become a concern for lighter aggregate blocks are used below DPC and this is covered as I said in another video we have on lane titled Do I Need a 13 Newton Thermal Block in Ireland? So again thank you for watching and uh, if you have any queries on anything you've watched in the video today or anything else that I haven't covered uh, please feel free to get in touch and um, my contact details are on the screen. Thank you.